Hi, I'm Dr. Elder. I'm the medical director of the cardiac care unit and the medical director of endovascular medicine at Harper Hospital Cardiovascular Institute at the Detroit Medical Center. Uh, we're about to engage in a very complex uh, chronic total occlusion of the iliac with a patient that has Rutherford category 3 to 4 life limiting claudication. My name is Maher Elder, I'm an interventional cardiologist at Detroit Medical Center Cardiovascular Institute. I have next to me Dr. Ahmed Wanir, who is also an interventional cardiologist, and we are planning on doing a complex task D lesion of a complete occlusion of the right common and external iliac. Uh, we're going to do this procedure percutaneous, and uh, we will do this uh, under um, moderate sedation. Uh, after obtaining access, uh, we take a ipsilateral uh, injection an angiogram of uh, the left uh, common femoral. And so we have a ipsilateral injection through the left common femoral after uh, obtaining access. The lima catheter, we're gonna go ahead and do a pigtail power injection uh, so we can visualize the entire iliac and distal aortic system. Nice. Okay, we, very good. And so we have, we have now just identified our anatomy and so now that we defined our anatomy, so we're exchanging now a pigtail catheter for a lima catheter. Our choice of lima catheter, uh, the catheter has an angle uh, roughly uh, 100 degrees, 110 degrees, which gives us access and a nice angulation so we can access contralateral. So now we have access ipsilateral with the lima catheter and we've exchanged it and we're gonna position the lima catheter where we believe the ostium of the right common iliac should be. So we just did a digital subtraction and I'm gonna use overlay to mark our territory as I access the contralateral side or the chronic total occlusion of the iliac. And you can see as we use overlay, an advantage to access the contralateral side into the right external iliac and it's off into a plane that is not luminal. Uh, so it's right in around the external, it's still luminal, and now there appears to be a dissection plane uh, on the right external iliac. The sheath I chose to use today have a opaque marker on it. It's called bright tip. This will allow me to identify where the sheath is at, uh, especially when you have a lesion that's very close to the access site. It allows me to position my sheath very close uh, to the chronic total occlusion. Once again, uh, the it's identifying that the common uh, iliac is 100% occluded uh, with complete occlusion of the uh, external and, il and internal iliac with only reconstitution at the common femoral. And now we have dual access, six French bright tip on the right and six French on the left. To cross the chronic total occlusion, we will use the star technique. If we find that we're close to the aorta and we're not intimal, we will then try to re-enter. We have now the quick cross and we have the gold tip glide. We're going to position the gold tip glide so it makes a loop early when we know we're, in, we're luminal. Making that loop while you're luminal helps uh, maintain the luminal position and so we're not sub intimal. And so as you can see, we're luminal, we have our loop early, and we have our quick cross. I'm going to advance the quick cross and maintain that loop until we hit the CTO. And that's where we're at right now. We hit the chronic total occlusion and we're going to advance it slowly in maintaining our loop, I want to just point out a very important, the loop, as you can see, it's narrow in diameter and our quick cross is just proximal to it. Keeping a narrow loop helps assure me that we're still luminal and we're very close. If we're intimal, we're very close to lumen. As that loop gets wider, then it, it's advancing towards the adventitia, which is not the direction I want to go. I want to make sure the loop is narrow at all times as I advance it which helps maintain that my subintimal tracking is closer to the lumen rather than the adventitia. And as you can see, the lumen got wide, the loop got wide, and as it widens, then I know that we are now uh, inside uh, the, the intimal heading towards the adventitia instead of the lumen. Here's our loop. 
our loop became narrow as we redirected it, which assures me that I'm closer. And I'm going to advance a quick cross as we maintain the loop. And so now I have some resistance. I'm not going to. I'm going to try to advance the wire without the quick cross. And so there's some resistance. So I'm going to pull the wire back into the quick cross. We see our left uh, six French Lima catheter, which is an lumen of the left uh, common iliac extending into the aorta. I see my gold tip glide wire, which is now close to the distal aorta, and I have my quick cross. And I'm going to advance now the quick cross and, and close by. I'm going to inject uh, from the ipsilateral side, and you can see the distance. I'm very close to the aorta. At this point, we advance the quick cross and the gold tip glide. We're clearly subintimal. We didn't re-enter into the distal aorta. So at this point, I'm committed to a re-entry device. And what we have is a needle that re-enters uh, is once in the direction. The needle will be pointed at the 12 o'clock position and we will advance the needle into the 12 o'clock position and then the wire will advance uh, luminal. The first marker is the tip of the Pioneer. The second marker is the needle that will be uh, extracting the wire and we're tracking it close to where we think the lumen is. Okay. And what you can see is an ultrasound. The center of the screen of the circle is, is where the ibis is. On top, you see a pulsatile, a color flow of the distal aorta. That is going to be our re-entry point. So now I'm going to add an 014 wire at the, at the tail end of the Pioneer, which is going to be the wire of choice that's going to re-enter into the luminal. Okay, advance the needle. Now I'm going to advance the wire. Now what you can see is that the wire exited the needle into the true lumen, and we have our initial wire, which is sub which is outside the lumen. Expand the needle into the lumen. We, uh, through our distal port, entered a new wire, 014 wire, and now we're going to pull out uh, the wire that we used to uh, uh, take the Pioneer catheter upwards. So you're seeing one wire that's exiting the needle of the Pioneer, luminal into the distal aorta, and we have our uh, initial wire, which is subintimal. We are going to now extract the subintimal wire. Go ahead, Ahmed. Yeah. So the needle is now retracted, and I will uh, pull out the Pioneer and leave our 014 wire that's now luminal. I'm going to verify that we're into luminal uh, by uh, injecting. You popping in is going to be an issue, yeah? You see? See how it pops in? You notice that? Okay, very good. Great. A very important clue that we're luminal, as you can see, is the bleed back from the quick cross. So we know that we're luminal, and you see this flow, and this is a good sign that you're